Welcome back to a very special video. It is my Premier League predictions video. We do this each year and I get it spot on every single year. Why are you always lying? So if you guys are excited for the return of the Premier League, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. That'd be much appreciated. We are on the road to 4,000 subscribers and we're getting closer each day. So also, if you guys want to tune in, leave your predictions in the comment section down below from your champions to your relegation battle, to the top scorer, etc. Leave it all in the comment section down below. That'd be a lot of fun too read your comments so before we get into my predictions if you guys play fancy premier league and fancy yourself at beating me at fpl then why not go ahead and join my league it is the code is on the screen as you can see there and i'm also going to put a link in the description at the top line that will be the link to auto join my league so if you fancy yourself against me you can beat me join my league so this is actually the third time i'm recording this video and i've had issues with it so i'm just going to whiz through all of the predictions so yeah there's not going to be too much in depth i'm just going to go through it all and we can have a little bit of a talk so the relegation battle for me is simple it's going to be three up three down we're going to have leicester at bottom southampton in 19th and ipswich in 18th i don't think they've got the quality to survive in the premier league unfortunately which is a little bit of a shame because it's kind of just the the theme right now isn't it they come up they go straight back down i think the ones that are going to be closest to the relegation battle are going to be brentford and bournemouth now i think they haven't strengthened that well in the transfer window and Bournemouth have lost to Lanky, so that is going to be a bit of an issue to replace his 19 Premier League goal season. Ivan Tony is still at Brentford, but it's a bit of an uncertainty around whether he's going to go or not. And he doesn't seem to be caring too much about helping Brentford in any way, really. He wants out. So then we've got Forest, Wolves and Everton. I think each of them, they're not going to be dragged into the relegation battle. I think they're going to do OK. I think Everton under Dyche, solid manager. He knows exactly how to survive in the Premier League. And he gets solid results at home, especially with the clean sheets and whatnot. You've got Wolves under Gary O'Neill, who I think has just signed a new contract as well. Good manager. Got some good attacking players in Huang Hee Chan. You've got Cunha as well. They did lose Neto, though, which is going to be a big loss. And then on to Forest. They had some good form ending the end of the season, you know, with the likes of uh, Hudson Adoy. You had Gibbs White, Alanga, all firing on all cylinders. And if they can continue that into next season, they could do very well. But I've got them fairly low. On to 12th to 8th. Now we've got Brighton, Fulham, Palace, Chelsea, and then West Ham. So let's talk about Brighton first. I think Brighton, they've lost a few key assets, being De Zerbi and Pascal Gross, two of the integral parts of why they did so well over the last few years, especially Pascal Gross. I think he's been a very, very underrated asset for them. They have signed a few decent players, though, especially that Minta, who looks like a very good asset. It's been very good in preseason. So be interesting to see how well they do. Fulham, I think they're an established Premier League side. I love the signing of Smith Rowe. Fantastic signing for me, and I think he's going to do very well. Crystal Palace under Glasner had amazing form, especially since he's came in, but they have lost Olise. But I do think they're going to be absolutely okay without him. I think Mateta is going to do very well, and especially Eze. Now, the issue for me with Chelsea, I've got them in ninth. Now, this might be controversial. Some people might disagree with me, but I think it's just too much of a mismatch for me. I'm not sure how well this new manager is going to do. They haven't done that well in pre season, and I think they needed a focal point up front. A true out and out number nine, for example, Victor Ossiman, who I think multiple teams could have looked at in this window. I think Cole Palmer's a world class player, and I think he's going to have an amazing season once again. And I do think Nkunku will have a good one as well if he can stay injury free. But overall, I think with the amount of players that they're signing and stuff, I just don't think it's going to gel that well. And I think that's been the issue for Chelsea for the past few years now. They're just signing and signing and signing, and there's no cohesive unit. Then on to West Ham in eighth. Now, I do think these could easily be a lot higher, but I've got them in eighth because, again, for me, it's they've signed a lot of players. So at the start of the season, how well are they going to play together? If they instantly gel, then they could, you know, propel themselves a lot higher. I love the signings they've made. Literally all of them, I think, are very, very good. The likes of Paul Krug, Somerville, Wan-Bissaka, like all of these are great signings for West Ham. And I do think they're going to propel them into a good season. I think this season could be the one where, you know, they, they look to challenge. And then maybe next year with a couple more additions, they fly. Newcastle, I think, have, you know, established themselves as the top seven asset. You know, they've got very, very good players. I think Isaac is a sensational striker and one that is destined for the top of the game. You've got Bruno G. If he stays, I think he's linked with Man City, um, but I think he will stay probably in the end. I think they've got some very good players. I think they're going to have a decent season, but I don't think they're going to set the world alight. I've got Aston Villa in sixth position. Now, for me, I think Aston Villa are a very, very good side. I love Emery. I think he's a fantastic manager. I think some of the players they've got are excellent, meaning Watkins, Emi Martinez, you know, Pau Torres. I think the signing of Amadou Anana is very smart. Andre, just wanted to... and Andre is not even my name, mate. Do you know what I mean? 
to replace of course Dougie Louise, who was one of their better players Ian Matson, another very good signing so they've got great players the issue for me is how are they going to deal with the Champions League are they going to still be able to compete at the same level in the Premier League well we yet to find out but for me I think it's going to take a toll so I, I do have them in sixth but if they do crash out earlier the Champions League maybe they got in the groups um then you know maybe they could push on for four then on to fifth position i've got tottenham hotspurs now i do think they're going to have a good season under Ange Postacoglu for the second year in a row um i underrated them a lot last season i did i didn't know how well they're going to do especially losing kane but they did they surprised me how well they did they started off like a house on fire didn't they but of course it faded out which is to be expected to be fair but this season, I love the signing of Dominic Solanke. I think he's going to fit them like a glove. I think he's going to do very, very well. Going to get a lot of goals in that Tottenham side who create a lot of chances. Son, I think he's going to have another very, very good season. They've got top players like Pedro Porro, Van de Ven, Vicario. So yeah, I, I like Tottenham's chances. I think they're going to do well. They could even push for fourth. Speaking of fourth, I have Manchester United coming in in the fourth position, getting that final Champions League spot. Now, I think the signings they've made so far are very smart. The likes of De Ligt, Masraoui, Lenny Yoro and Xerxes so far. But I do think they need a midfielder. And if they sign Sander Berg, that is a huge L in my opinion. He's not what they should be signing. Manuel Ugarte is the one they should be going for. If they can get him, it's looking like it's kind of on the ropes at the moment. PSG are trying to hold out. Man United are also holding out for the price that they want. So, you know, it's, it's coming to terms whether he's going to get signed or not. They want 70. I think United want to pay about 60. If they can get that deal over the line, I think they're looking fantastic for fourth at least. Because I don't think Casemiro is going to be the one you want over a whole season. He had a very good Community Shield game. And I do think there's still a player in him. But for me... He's a bit too slow now. You can see that the pace is no longer there. Not that he ever really had it, but he was, it was competent enough that, you know, it would get him over the line. And he's obviously been a world-class player throughout his whole career. But based on last season, he was super, super slow. And the way that he likes to play is jumping into a tackle. So if he misses it, he's often caught out of position, which leaves the midfield open and which led to a lot of open chances for uh, opposition teams against Man United last season. So for me, I'd like someone that's a bit more, you know, agile, that's able to get back and forth much quicker. So for someone like Ugarte to come in, I think would be an amazing signing for Manchester United. And that would solidify that midfield a lot more. On to third position, I've got Arnie Slots Liverpool. Now, I think the transition from Klopp to Arnie Slots Liverpool side has been pretty seamless so far. The preseason, of course, their form has been amazing. I think they've won every single game. I believe they lost to uh, Preston at the start. But apart from that, it's been pretty damn flawless and they look very, very good. Salah slotted in goals. Diogo Jota, if he can stay fit, I think he can have a very, very good season. Diaz, Nunes, Kuriakpo, all very good players. And now you've got the likes of Gerald Quanta breaking in in the defence. You know, of course, you've got Konate. You've got the experience and world-classness of Van Dijk. Trent, Robertson, Simicast, all of these are very, very good. And of course, they, they brought in a few midfielders last season, which all done very well in Sabozlai, Endo, McAllister and they can continue that into next season. I think Liverpool are going to have a very good season. I do think they can push all the way. Whether there'll be enough for a, a title charge, I'm not sure. They are in the market for a midfielder. They wanted Zubamendi. That's been dead in the water now. Zubamendi decided to stay at Sociedad, which for me is a very weird decision, but I'm happy. So I think Liverpool are going to have a good season. I think they're going to come third, and I, you know, I think they'll be happy with that. And then who's going to win the Premier League? You probably already knew it was coming. It's going to be Manchester City for me. I think Erling Haaland is going to be fit and firing goals for fun i think he's going to hit 30 plus quite comfortably if the boy can stay fit of course that is going to be a huge bonus i like the signing of savio you know they've already got the likes of Grealish, doku on that left wing with foden to come back uh, from international duty and, and his holiday they've got bernardo silva rodri i mean the list is honestly endless and now with oscar bob coming through as well a good young talent I just think they're going to be too good. They've got the experience, they've got the squad, and they've got the best manager in the world. There's no real excuses to why they can't go and win again, and I think they're going to get five in a row. Now, the reason why I don't have Arsenal winning the league, I do think they're going to be neck and neck all the way once again, but I think they're going to come up short. And for me, it's because they didn't go and sign that top tier strike, which I thought they might have done. It seems like Arteta is happy to stick with Havertz and Jesus as the front two options, which is fair enough. They're both very good players, but for me, I felt like, you know, there was an Osman there for the taking. You go and stick a load of money for him. He sticks up front. He gets you 20 to 30 goals in the Premier League 
and that probably carries you over the line into that top spot. You've got Saka, who I think is going to have an unbelievable season once again. If Martinelli can step up on his form, he was a bit lackluster for me last season. Trossard did step up when, when needed to as well. So if Martinelli can get back up to the form, that would be very good for Arsenal. Of course, Odegaard, I think he'll have another good season. You've got the likes of Rice. They've just signed uh, Marino as well in midfield, which is another good option for them. And then, of course, they already had the best defence in the league, didn't they? And they've gone and strengthened it with Calafiori. And they're going to get Jury and Timber back from injury. So I think in defence, they're going to be wrapping up that Golden Glove pretty comfortably for me. And the old adage is defence wins title. So could that be the thing that's going to get Arsenal over the line? For me, personally, no. I don't think it's going to be quite enough, but I do think they're going to be neck and neck with City. So those are my Premier League predictions. I've tried to run for it pretty damn quick. If you agree with it, let me know in the comment section down below. Or if you think I'm an absolute clown, I've got no idea what I'm talking about. Also, leave your feedback in the comment section down below. So let's talk about the other prediction. So for top scorer, I'm going to go with an outfield shout. You guys probably won't think I'm going to go with this, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to go with Erling Haaland. Now, this guy is an unknown quantity in the league, so it's going to be interesting to see how well he does. I think he's got an outside shot of getting top scorer. But in all seriousness, I think this is a pretty damn easy choice with Erling Haaland there. I think in second position, I'm going to go with Alexander Izak. I think he's going to have a phenomenal season. I really do. And in third, I'm going to go with Dominic Solanke. That might have been actually the top three from last season. Or was Watkins in there? Watkins might have been in there. For player of the season, I'm going to go with Alexander Izak. As I just said, I think he's going to have a really, really good season. And I think if Newcastle do want to do well this year, he needs to stay fit and firing. I think he's going to get... 20 plus goals and I think he's going to probably hit about seven plus assists as well which I think will be a phenomenal return for a very very good player as for the golden glove I've basically already said who I think is going to get it it's Arsenal they've got the best defense in the league they've already strengthened it as well I don't see why they don't win it again so now let's move on to the domestic cup I think for the FA cup I think I'm going to go with Arsenal I think Arsenal are going to want to be winning some sort of silverware this season they haven't won it for a few years you know, the last trophy they got, I think, was the FA Cup with Arteta in his first year. Could be wrong on that, but I believe that's correct. So I think a trophy is definitely on Arsenal's agenda this season, and I think it's going to be the FA Cup. So as for the Carabao Cup, this is going to be my out there shout, and it might be a little bit controversial. I think this is going to be the comment generator of the video. I'm going to go with Tottenham Hotspur to finally get a cup again, and I'm going to go with them to win the Carabao Cup. I don't know why. I just I do think they're going to win something this season. And I think the Carabao Cup is going to be their best choice. I like the signing of Dominic Solanke. I really do think he's going to have a good season. Combining with Son, combining with Brennan Johnson, they've got a decent defence. You know, they've already had a year now under Ange. Now it's on to the second season where you really nail down and push on. So I think they're going to want to win a trophy and I think the Carabao Cup is going to be the perfect choice. So those are going to be my choices for the domestic trophies. And now let's move on to the international one. So for the Champions League, I'm going to keep it simple and sweet. I think Real Madrid are going to retain their title. They've just added Kylian Mbappe, the best player in the world, to their team. There's no reason why they can't. They've got experience. They've got world-class players and they've got youth as well. They've literally got it all. So I don't see why they don't retain. For the Europa League, I'm going to go with Manchester United. Maybe a little bit biased, but I think Ten Hag will want to continue winning silverware. And, you know, if they are struggling in the league, Europa League is another way into the Champions League. So why not prioritise that as well as the league? And then the final one we're going to talk about is the Conference League. I'm not going to lie. I don't know too much about who's in there, but I'm going to go with, I think Fiorentina are in there. I'm going to go with them to win it. They just signed the absolute legend. That is David De Gea. So hopefully he can go there and win some silverware. That would be lovely to see. So those are going to be my season long predictions. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Let's quickly have a run through then of what they are. So let's start Southampton and Ipswich to go down. Manchester City to win the league. Arsenal to win the FA Cup. Tottenham to win the Carabao Cup. You've got Real Madrid to win the Champions League. United to win the Europa League and Fiorentina to win the Euro uh, Conference League, as well as Isaac to get player of the season, Erling Haaland top scorer, David Raya golden glove, and that is a wrap. So those are my predictions. Thank you so much for watching. Leave all yours in the comment section down below, and I'll catch you all for another Premier League season, which I'm super excited for. Let's go. Come on.